DIY with Chris, giving you the tools to do it yourself. We have the three front door light switches right now, and we've taken off the base plate for it, but we're getting ready to take it apart. So I just wanted you to see exactly what it looks like um, to the beginning here. So you can see all the way into the box and you can see that they, we did have three regular switches in there before. Okay, so we're going to be doing the last deinstallation of the original light switch. And this is for the front entryway. I did have these light switches before or they were wired before in the way that our middle light switch actually controlled the outside lights. And I, this end one here controlled the entryway lights. So I am going to be switching them around. That's why I haven't reinstalled either of the two previous switches here. And the installation for these basic lights is very easy. As you can see, I already have one done up there. All you have to know on these ones is which is your ground wire, negative, and positive wires. So in order to take them out, you just have to use, for this particular set, a Phillips screwdriver, ensuring that the electricity is already turned off for this, and undo the two uh, screws that secure them into the electrical box. For these particular screws, there is a backing here so that they don't come out, so I have to take them out of the backing as well. So as we pull it out of the wall here, what you're going to see is the all copper wire or the one with green on it is going to be your ground wire. On the other side, we have our negative and positive wires. Now when we do on the new switch, and that's what the one that we have right next to it, we do have the green screw on this particular brand, which is our ground wire. And then on the opposite side, they feed in the exact same, in the same order that they were on this previous switch. So as you unscrew these, you're going to take the new switch and put them in the exact same order. So light switch up, and it does indicate on here what the top is. We do have our green screw, which is going to be our negative, or our ground wire. And on the other side, we have the two screws, and you're just going to put them in in the exact same order. Or, if your wiring is different for some reason in your house, then you'll have to change it for that. So the first thing I do on this is I just make sure that all the screws are loose. And then I begin with my ground wire. So once I have my ground wire separate, I'm going to take my new switch. And I will take out the green screw and I will feed the screw back through the loop that they have on here and that's just how the wiring in my house is ran you'll have to adjust accordingly for yours And after the screw is back through there, then you're just going to tighten it into the slot. And then you're just going to follow the rest in sequence, taking the exact same steps. On this particular light switch, it also comes with a little plate. So when you run the wiring through the plate, it'll actually cinch it down in there after you put the screw in. So what you'll do is run the wiring through, put it below the plate, run the plate right over it, and it does have a little notch there that comes out, so you have to match it with the hole. Then after the wiring is under there, you'll put the screw back through, 
and cinch it over the wiring. It does have two little slots right here where the ends of the wires can run through. However, my wire is a little bit thicker here, so I've not been able to get them to run through those slots appropriately. So I'm not using this cinch device. You may notice that as you're taking out or putting in the screws initially, it is kind of tough, so you will have to push through it or put a little bit more force on it, but you do want to make sure you're avoiding cross-threading. My exterior lights are going to be my first switch here, my entryway inside, and then my fan control lights right here. Now, for this fan control light, we do have to do a three-way light because there is another switch, which I'm going to do here in just a bit. Okay, so what we're doing now is after we have finished the wiring, we are remounting the switches, and then we're going to put on the face plate again. So these controls already come with the screws in here. So after you get them all wired together and everything is in place and have checked your work to make sure that the switches are working, then all you have to do is the screws are already in there so you just have to finish screwing them into the plates or into the electrical box. Okay, now we are starting on the other switch. This one only has the two switches on it. One's the fan and one's the actual light. And we are changing these to be dimmable. So the first thing you do is just undo the screws that are on the faceplate. So after you've got the screws and faceplate off, then you're just gonna have to peel it back. A lot of time it's stuck just a little bit with paint that was on the walls. And remove it. And again, through every step of this, even if you check your work to see if the wiring is correct, by turning on the lights in between, make sure that before you start, the electrical panel is turned off. So at this point, you can pull them out, which is going to expose all the wiring that you need. And at this time, the only thing you're going to have to change on these is if you're going to be doing dimmable or not, because the wiring will be different. On the other two, I had just regular switches because I didn't want my entry or exterior lighting to dim. So on this one, it will change slightly. So this is just my regular dimming switch and my wiring is going to be the same at least for this particular brand we do have the ground wire which is green and we have the two black wires which are just going to carry over the same thing on the right hand side as you've seen on the other ones So my order is always the same. I'm going to start with the ground wire. These kits also come with the caps and extra screws in case you need them when mounting. So you want to have some of the caps available. For these, since my wiring is bent, I have to straighten them out. First one we're going to look at in installing here is the fan switch. And it is a three-way one. So it does have the four wires on the back. And so we're going to take off the old switch. I am not actually running a three-way, I just happen to have an extra switch on it. It's And these are the Lutron ones. But if you are going to install multiple of these particular types of switches, they do have these extra tabs on either side. 
so before installation or after, but it's more of a pain, you're actually going to flex and bend either side of these and break these off so that it sits flush and that way you can get your cover back on your faceplate. So we're going to take off the old switch now and apply the new one. What you'll notice here is where this is a three-way um, fan switch for the new one. It does have the four wires. The red and white wire where I'm not running an actual three-way will be discarded. So we'll just put a cap on that and then tuck it back in the area. So the rest of them is just going to be your ground, your live wire, <clears throat> and then your negative. So we're going to take the same process and we will start undoing the wires on the old. Again, if you had at any time wanted to test your switches just to make sure what they were, if you turn the power on for any reason, please make sure that it is off here. Being that all these wires are the appropriate colors, I'm just going to take off the entire switch and then re relay these ones. So the first one I'm going to do is just the regular ground wire. And for this, on the old box we had all the wires bent around screws so I'm gonna have to straighten them back out so we'll just take a flathead screwdriver and start prying them out and afterwards I'll use my pliers for this as an extra safety concern it does help if for this you use items with rubber handles just in case your electricity does kick on or if you hadn't turned it off. I right now can't find my rubber handle so these are what I'm using. And as you'll see on here this black wiring actually runs to my other switch as well so what I'll do is when I rewire this other switch I'm just going to take the end off of that one and I'll run my wiring to that one as well. So there will be three wires at one cap for that one. So I'm going to begin with my ground wire. Take my red wire next. You should note that if you are doing a three way switch and you do have two different locations that you'll be running wiring, or two different locations that you'll be operating the item from, then only one of the Locations should have the three-way switch. The other locations should have just a regular switch. Otherwise, they will battle each other in competition to try and control the speed or the dimming or whatever other features you have going to them. So for the last switch, this red one, being that I am not running a, th a three-way on it, I'm just going to cap it off. And it will just sit inside. And you will want to give your wires just a slight tug after you put the cap on to make sure that they have that they are secure. So being that the black wire is shared with this other switch, I'm going to go ahead and start on the other switch now. And then when I connect the black wiring to this switch, that's when I'll run my final black 
wire to my fan switch as well. So here I have my other dimming switch. It's the same brand and you'll see that on my fan switch I have broke off the extra tabs and on this one I have not yet. So I'm going to go ahead and do that at this time. And the easiest way is just to take pliers and you're going to pry back and forth and then they just pop right off. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and start the wiring on my dimming switch. I'm going to first bend out the wires so that I can secure them together. Once I have bent them out slightly, I'll finish straightening them with the pliers. I'll take my other switch. And again, I'm going to start with the ground wire. And I usually twist these around just slightly. Add the cap. I'm going to give it that little tug just to make sure it's secure. And you'll see on this particular switch, just two black wires versus the black and the red. So I'm going to take my first one and cap it. Then coming back to the fan switch, I do have that extra black wire, so I'm going to take the leftover black wire for the dimming switch, the black wire for the fan switch, and then the black wire that the fan switch would go to. I'm going to run all of these, or use the same cap for all of these, because in the other location, all it is is a bare segment of the wire that has been, the coating has been removed and it's just a loop so I can't secure that to that with the regular caps and I prefer using this method. So at this time everything has been wired correctly. Something you do want to make sure that you're aware of on here. And here's the final product after the faceplate is back on. This is the fan switch with the slider. It has three different fan modes. And then the dimming switch uh, right here with this switch right next to it. Uh, one nice feature on this is that when the light is off, you do have the slight orange backlight. So we're going to go ahead and turn this on. And whenever you're doing these lights, you need to make sure that whatever you put in there, they need to be LED and dimmable capable. If you do it on other lights, then they burn out very quickly, especially if they're not actually rated to be dimmable. So here it is on the highest setting. And that is it all the way down. So the lights are still on, but they're very, very dim. That is it off. On again. And all the way to the brightness. Now, for the fan, it is on the lowest speed right now, so we won't get up very fast on that lowest one. And there's just three speeds available on this. So that's the lowest speed. We're going to crank it up to the middle. You can see it's speeding up now. And then we'll go up to the top. So you can actually see it get going. This has actually worked very wonderfully and this is a hunter fan. I know that that does play a part in kind of what switches you do use because some of them are capable with hunter and then some of them are capable with the other brand. So there's just the two main brands. So you do have to be aware of that whenever you are installing your switches. And that is the installation here of the dimmer switches and fan control speeds 
uh, from regular switches uh, and especially on the three-way capable. Hope this was helpful.